Hey guys, what's cooking? Welcome to the showdown. Yeah, might as well do a Doug edition while the series is still fresh in my mind. Just the fact it had two runs on two networks already invited the idea of this happening. The shows did end up running for a combined 7 seasons and 117 episodes, but they were able to avoid repeating themselves too often. Today's showdown is between Doug Tips the Scales from the Nick run, and Doug's chubby buddy from the ABC run. Both these episodes are about the main characters dealing with potential weight problems and tough struggles to maintain their figure, but are rather different in their style and pacing. Which one needs to trim the fat? Let's find out. Doug Tips the Scales comes from the fourth, and arguably most popular season of the original Nickelodeon show. I mean, they made a whole new show bible just for this season. They were more than happy to polish things up. In this episode, Doug stays at his new grandma's house for a weekend, and is pampered with junk food and tube time. When he gets back home, his family takes note that he's gained some weight from his visit. Tween anxiety ensues. Now why don't we ask someone who knows a lot about Blubber? What do you think, fatty, 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 fatty? I'm really happy they waited until a later season to tell a story about weight gain. If they did it too early, it wouldn't have been as well realized or as down to earth as it should have been. This was the right time for Doug to go through this. Not only does he have to lose weight to better his self esteem, but he's also going to a pool party at the end of the week and wants to be in shape for that. Then after all this setup, the episode just breathes and shows all the different ways Doug tries to get thinner, meditating with Judy, getting Ronald Weisenheimer workout tapes, and going for jogs. All good stuff, peppered with fun character interactions. I especially like him meeting up with Connie and Larry, two of his more rotund friends, and seeing how they describe their own appearances more brightly than others. We're not fat, Doug. I'm big boned. And I'm stout. Well then what am I? Husky? Husky? And Skeeter eating a bunch of donuts because he thinks he's too underweight for the pool party. Sure, Skeet, sure. And I like how the end result of all the work isn't Doug becoming a super fit athlete, he goes back to just having a small baby bump, which everyone's fine with. At first I wasn't sure about the exercise scenes, because there was already an episode where Doug tried to pump up, but it adds significantly to the ending. When he makes it to the pool party, none of the other kids are brave enough to jump into the pool to get the party started. None except Doug, who imitates Ronald Weisenheimer. That ties things together nicely, and adds an additional lesson of feeling confident with your appearance around others. Something to note is that the animation is a little more cartoonish here than normal in certain shots, even outside the fantasy sequences. This animation of Doug sniffing up the donuts probably wasn't down to earth enough. But besides that, this was a really good episode for Doug's slightly above average standards. Now we know how an 11 year old Bluffingtonian boy would deal with thinking thin, but how about a 12 year old girl? Doug's chubby buddy, from season 2 of the ABC run, or season 6 overall, is everyone's favourite type of episode, a very special one. They make sure to hammer in the week's topic in hopes the viewers are changed by the story and take the topic more seriously. At least, that was their intention in the 80s and 90s. To its credit, Doug is always taking its issue seriously. They even got an educational consultant for this episode, and put a disclaimer and hotline number at the end of the episode's original airing in 1997. There's free information available about eating disorders. You can call Girl Power at 1-800-729-6686 or visit the EDAP website. Caregivers can call the National Institutes of Mental Health at 1-800-647-2642. This all goes a long way in making it a tactful and respectful discussion on the subject, why has Doug Tips the Scales already won? Doug's chubby buddy begins with most of his friends getting hooked on a drama series, Teen Heart Street. The eponymous street's number isn't in the title for some baffling reason. In particular, Patty watches it out of sheer curiosity for why it's popular. She finds the actual writing to be rubbish. But after the show, a commercial comes on explaining what fat is, and how the body forms more fat cells during puberty. This freaks the girls out, and they start going on a trendy new diet the star of the show's selling. Hi Lardy! Hello! It's a sad fact of life that none of you will ever have a 9 inch waist. This is really important to show. 
Insulting your audience is objectively bad advertising, but it's sadly all too common in the health industry, and it works. Especially on Patty eventually. She starts having some trademark Doug fantasies of becoming a huge blob, and becomes obsessed with losing weight. Even as her other friends stop taking it so seriously, Patty keeps running and starving herself down to the bone, resulting in rapid mood swings and a loss of energy. Eventually, during some sporting tryouts, she passes out, and Miss Crystal helps her recover, explaining to her that the body still needs food to function. Although they never use the proper term, it's obvious that throughout the episode, Patty's suffering from anorexia nervosa. I don't want to crack jokes about this A-plot, or pick it apart too harshly. Anorexia is a serious eating disorder that affects millions of people, and is more likely in women, often due to pressure from the media to get thinner and thinner. What this episode does successfully, is bring awareness to the disorder and one of its main starting points. This A-plot is very special for a very good reason. How do they fudge it up? Well, they give Skeet this wacky B-plot about attracting the Lucky Duck monster with a fake girlfriend. Which isn't wrong by itself, but it constantly intersects with the A-plot at the worst possible times, often undercutting it. If they seriously needed a subplot to fill time, and further the points made, they could have fleshed out the parts with BB and her electronic calorie calculator. BB Blah, male, height 6 feet 2 inches, target weight 250 pounds, woohoo, beefy! That seems interesting, even if its voice is so stereotypically fruity. Wait, fruity? Now I feel like an idiot. So yeah, this episode is there if you really need it, or are looking for something more serious from Doug, but you're gonna have to put up with some intrusive elements. So while my ribbon goes to tips the scales, Chubby Buddy has its use so it isn't really bad. I think scales is more to the point with its messages, easier to watch since it's 11 minutes long, and I think Doug works best in 11 minute increments, and it's more balanced in its messages about diets and exercise regimes. Chubby Buddy's equally effective, but just not as fun of an episode overall. It has its use, and I encourage you to learn more about anorexia if it's affecting you in some way, but in this instance, think thin. Goodbye for now. Anything so fat in your life? No, Briar. It's both sad and horrifying. Run, Pat!